Standing in front of his throne and say something good to him. Let it come from your heart. You are the God of everything, the Lord of my life, my strength, my God. I celebrate you, Lord. Glory to your name. Oh, I have a 
your mighty grace, greatness, your mercy, your favor, your kindness to us. Lord, we worship you. Take all the glory, Lord. There is somebody there who has a problem in the private path. The Lord is healing you this morning. Another person has an, uh, a low abdominal problem. Pain. The Lord is healing you also. Another person has uh, an ache at the back of the head. The Lord is healing you this morning. Thank you, ancient of this. Yeah. And also, somebody has uh, um, a right elbow challenge. The Lord is healing it. Even if it's a chest pain, sense that chest pain, the Lord is also healing it this morning. Thank you, ancient of days. Words are not good enough to honor you. We celebrate you. Thank you for answering prayers all the time. Now, if I mention your case, please come, let me touch you. Let me touch you so that the work can be completed. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, giver of life. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your kindness. You are good all the time. Take all the glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. I command your healing in the name of Jesus. I command your healing in the name of Jesus. I command your healing in the name of Jesus. I command your healing in the name of Jesus. I command your healing in the name of Jesus. I command your healing in the name of Jesus. I command your healing in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, you are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Thank you for all the healing. We insist the affliction will not rise up a second time. Thank you, Daddy. And I request every other thing you want to do this morning, make it easy for us to accept. Glory belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hey, you are tired. Praise the Lord. Ah. That's more like it. Stay in the presence of God. Before I go to the Word of God this morning, let me quickly make some announcements, some comments. Number one, I want to thank everyone who has been participating in the Miracle Explosion. Some of you have not missed one day. Thank you for coming. And there are some of you I don't think I've seen you once, or maybe maybe only once or twice. Where have you been? Huh? Look at somebody beside you. If you have not been seen the person, ask him, where have you been? <laughs> where have you been? Anyhow. So, I want to thank those who have been attending, and I want to tell you, keep attending, please. And I will appreciate our online friends who have been taking active part since we started, where you people are making the meeting exciting, those of you who have been taking part. I think we should give a round of applause for our online family, huh? Even though we don't see them. It's good to celebrate them. They have been very participatory. I think what's the grammar now? They have been consistent in participating. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate you. And I appreciate every one of you. Thank you for coming. Yesterday was the 15th day. And we have just started. So we are moving on. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The church is marching on. So, those of you who have not been coming, go and schedule your schedule. So that you can participate also. Some of you, you invited your friends, they have not come. Re invite them, remind them so that they too can come. It shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Number two, last week I told you that we began a building in Electoral. We laid the foundation on the first. Of July, just as we were starting the prayer here, we we're laying the foundation there also, or rather, I laid the foundation before I came to start the prayer here. Well, I, and I told you the 24-room executive hostel we're building is a story building, 12 rooms down, 12 rooms upstairs. It's a big, massive project, kind of. Maybe, I don't think we have done anything that uh, involving before. Because most of our rooms are just, I mean, most of our buildings are three rooms, something, something like that. Five rooms at most. This one, 24 rooms. And you don't know what that involves if you are not building. But I think, I think you are now knowing what it involves. In terms of blocks alone, we have, we have already bought 6,000 blocks. And we are still on the base. We have not started going up. Well, I, I was going to tell you that we have started the lean till now. And I think God has been very good to us. Because in two weeks, 
it's just two weeks now, and the lane tour has started. They have started doing the lane tour. I we are pursuing. We are trying to get to Deccan level this week. That's the new week we are stepping into. We are trusting God. We have spent a lot of money, you know, uh, a lot of money. Mm. But we have just started. We have not done the decking, we have not. So we need a lot of money. If you want to support, remember, I gave you the account number the other time, FCMD. Maybe you didn't hear because I have not seen your support. So let me say it again. FCMB account 0306 153 Again, 0306 153 012. Mufas, you said me, I will be back. Mufas, 0306 153. 012 Okay You know your name now The name of the ministry When you see it you will know it Okay So let me come back to crusades now Now Hundred days prayer crusade is ongoing but immediately after the 100, crusade, 100 days crusade finishes, we will be traveling to Central Africa, Iluko, uh, uh, Agbegbe, the area, Central Africa, and that will be, we'll be going to Congo specifically for the work of soul winning. And for 21 days, we will be doing three major gospel outreaches in a place they call Bukavu, Goma, and Huvira. Don't worry, you are used to the names, eh? aren't you? You are used to all kinds of names. Uh, we are going to Bukavu, we are going to Goma, we are going to Huvira. And also, we will do a minister's great crusade in Kinshasa. Kinshasa is the federal capital. So, that's going to be in October, by the grace of God. And uh, to facilitate that, we are already translating two of our books to French. You know, they speak French in that country and in fact this year we are going to be doing a lot of meetings in uh, French speaking countries because in November also we will be going to Togo and we will do 21 days in Togo also in November and sometimes in uh, April we will be going to Niger we we'll spend two weeks in Niger in Maradi area so those are three countries that speak French. And because of that, we are already translating our, the book we give to converts, we are translating it to French. And a book that we are going to give to ministers also, we are translating to French. As soon as we finish translation, we begin to publish, we begin to print those materials so that we can facilitate the meetings we are going to do in those places. We need a lot of money for that project also because there's so much of work we have to do this year in terms of uh, evangelism. We can use the same account I gave to you before to support our crusade operation. I don't like talking about it over and over again, but The moment you know, at least you know the account, you have an idea of what we are doing, and then you can support when it works for you. 0306 153012 FCMB. 
finally this morning I want to celebrate one of my pastors who just produced a musical CD. Lovely, 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 lovely. Lovely. The, the title of the CD is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is Thy Faithfulness. Thank you. I'm happy that you are clapping for her. Because uh, it's an accomplishment. First of all, I both the animal shall stand up for our contribution. Woo! Glory! Sit down. I'm celebrating it particularly this time around. This is not the first time she's doing it today. But I, the, the last one I didn't, we didn't, I didn't agree with her. And I didn't celebrate it because that was celebrating a politician. And uh, no, I even fought with her about it. But this one, I love it. I've listened to it over and over again. And I'm selling it. I'm buying it and I'm selling it. Huh? Because I love it. I love it. I love it. She's celebrating the Lord, my King, my God. And um, anyone who is celebrating my King is my friend. This material is excellent. Not, not just because she did it. I listened to it. You know, there are some CDs you play it once. You don't want to. You just, you just forget it somewhere because they are not good for hearing the second time. But this one, you will enjoy it. Mm. I will even sing one of the songs they are very soon now. I like it. And I want you to buy it. Uh, I bless your music ministry today. And I release abundance upon you in Jesus' name. Your voice will be heard all over the world. As you promote the gospel, as you promote the name of the King of Kings, the world will hear your voice. Thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' name I pray. I don't know how much they are selling, but I will buy 100 copies for 500 naira. 500 naira per copy. So that, that should come to about uh, 50,000. Yes, I'll buy that. That's what I am buying. And I want you to buy. I want you to buy. I, I don't know how much. How much should I sell it today? 500 naira. If you can buy 500 naira, it would be great. But I think the, the normal cost price would be about 300 or something. But today, huh? 350. 350. Uh -huh. That's the normal cost price. You know, things are not, things are not getting cheaper in Nigeria, you know. They just keep jumping and jumping. These kind of things, they are expensive to put together now. So, if you can buy 500 today, I'll be very glad. But if you cannot buy 500 and buy 350, it's alright. For any of my leaders, you must not buy 350. Are you hearing me? They are hearing me. You are hearing me. Buy more. In fact, buy plenty of copies and distribute. How many copies do you have today here? Eh? 500. You can buy all of it. 
I just bought 100. It means 400. Can we? we can buy today. Let's. I won't care me to Google. I won't care me. They have been older than me. Look, Papa. Let's buy everything. We can buy it. And people online, if you want to buy, her phone number is 0803 346 5043. Sorry? You want me to call the number again? You don't need number. Look at that here. The people I'm talking to, they can rewind what I said. And they can hear it again and again. That's why I'm always that fast. I know they can always get it. Alright? But let me do it again. 0803 346 5043. Call her and buy 1 million copies. If, we, if she doesn't have it, you must you create, you create it. Amen. Thank you for celebrating my son. One of the songs. Say, oh, did you know? Money, Lati, story. I told you to compose the song before. It's a song. You have heard me singing it everywhere. It's a good song. Ori, re, re, o. Sani, te, mi, la, ye. Oh, did you know? Money, Lati, story. Ori, re, re, o. Sani, te, mi, la, ye. I <laughs> Amen. Go and get it. You want me to continue to sing it? I will not continue. You want to hear everything? No, go and buy it so that you can hear everything. Huh? It's lovely. Okay. Open your Bible to Romans chapter 12. Now this is the third message I'm, I was, I mean I did on uh, scriptural character. But somehow we lost it. Our records lost it. And by the time we posted online, this one was missing. And as a result of that, I have been asked to please say it again. And I'm saying it again because I know that most of you didn't even hear it the first time. I prayed and God said I should repeat this message because it will help you. Scriptural character. Under scriptural character, we have said a number of things. Part of what we spoke about was humility as a, a, a virtue that you need to develop if you want to last in glory. You want to fulfill destiny and stay in your glory. You must learn humility. You get married, you must learn humility. You start business, you must learn humility. Whatever you are doing, you must operate in humility. Even you have, you have a, a, a public program, a, a, a public uh, assignment, thinking or whatever. You need humility. It takes humility to last in glory. And then I spoke about contentment. That you must be satisfied with what God is doing in your life. Oh yeah, you keep on aspiring for something greater. But be excited about what he has done. And this one was supposed to be number three. It is called selflessness. 
selflessness as a virtue of greatness that will sustain you in greatness. When you rise into glory so that you can stay there you need a virtue called selflessness. It's one of the reasons why you see people rise and they collapse. Because they are selfish. When you see somebody who is selfish, so self-centered, they don't last in glory. So you need selflessness. Actually, selflessness is a language not known to the unbeliever. Their own language is selfishness. That's why you talk about if they give the hold to anybody, he will hold to himself. He will hold to himself. Huh? If fire burn you and burn your picking, now your own you go first come out. Those are the languages of the unbeliever. But unfortunately, we believers have started inculcating that language into our life also. And uh, the more we go in that direction, the farther we go away from the Lord. Because that's not what He taught us. What He taught us is not that. We must be like Him. And He was completely selfless. He bought us by His blood. And because He bought us with His blood, we can't do what we like again. We have the responsibility to reflect his selfless personality and to accomplish his interest on the earth. That's why I said you should go to Romans chapter 12. Let me show you something in verse 1 of it. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Is your service that is reasonable, is a service that is reasonable for you to offer unto the Lord. That you present your bodies unto the one who bought you for a price. You present your body to him as a sacrifice. That is, you allow him to do what he likes with you, with your body. Because your body does not belong to you any longer. Our responsibility is to do what he wants and not what we want. When we do that, the value of selflessness will come to play in our, our life. Let me break it down a little bit. Number one, in your interest, you know the normal human being seeks his own interest. I've told you before, there are many things that repeat that, uh, that, that, that discretion. Anyone will hold in his direction. If you are caught in fire break with your child, you will serve your own interest first before you attend to your child. And I told you, those are the ways of the world. The kingdom way is different from that. The Bible says we should love each other as he loved us. How did he love us? I'm coming to that. In the Old Testament, the Bible says you should, people should love people as they love themselves. You love the other person the way you love yourself. That's the law in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, when he was speaking to the believers, he didn't ask us to love people like we love ourselves. No. 
He said we should love them the way He loved us. And that's important to note. How did He love us? He gave His life for us. And we are expected to do the same for the kingdom and for others. As His representatives. We are representing Him. So, the way He loved them, we should love them also. Now, if you are giving your life to someone, it means that that person is more important than yourself. Hello? Are you with me? Of course, when you give your life to somebody, that means you are going to die. When you are giving your life to somebody, it means you are going to die. Yes, you will die. But the death that you are going to experience is like that of the grain of wheat that falls to the ground and dies. The grain of wheat. When? Okay. 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 Maybe I should use corn. Because most of us don't know wheat anyhow. It's like corn. When you put it inside the soil, within one or two days, it will die. It will die. And when it dies, on the third day, it will rise. A new life will come out of it. So when the Bible is saying you should die, it's not being wicked to you. It's not thinking of terminating you. It's trying to bring something new out of you. Falling to the ground and dying. By the standard of the word of God. Does not terminate your existence. It gives you a new life. Even Jesus, when he died on the cross, that was not the end of his story. On the third day, what happened? He rose from the dead. In essence, you are also going to rise from that death whenever you put yourself down like that. There is no one who had put himself down that did not rise back. There is no one who has perished in the process of serving the Lord and blessing other people who did not come out again with a new glory. There was a man in the Bible called Solomon. He had an opportunity to ask whatever he wanted from God for himself. He, he, he just became the king. And he offered some sacrifices unto God. And he went to sleep. In the night, the Lord just appeared to Solomon. And said, hey, young man, I am God. The maker of all things. The God of your father. I want to bless you. So, I don't know what blessing you want. Ask whatever you want. And I will do it for you. Hey, if you were in the shoes of Solomon, what are you going to ask for? Ask whatever you want. Hey, Rose Royce, Rose Royce. Rose Royce. No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Jaguar. <laughs> what are you going to ask for? I want a house in Dubai. Hey, I want a house in uh, Hawaii. I want a jet. That can fly. What are you going to ask? Solomon said, Well, Lord, you have just made me king over these people. These are your people. I don't know how to be a king. I don't know how to take care of them. Please give me wisdom so that I can lead these people right. And God was surprised. Say, you mean that's what you want? You don't want Jaguar? You don't want Rolls Royce? Uh-uh. Okay. Since that's what you want. 
I do it for you. That you love my people enough and you are thinking of how to be a blessing to them. I will give you that wisdom that you are asking for. And you will, be, you will excel every other king that has reigned before you. You will be better than any king that is going to reign after you. Because you ask for that wisdom to take care of my people. But in addition, things you didn't ask for, I will give to you. I will make your name to be mentioned across the world. And the fame of Solomon went all over the world. People heard of Solomon everywhere. To the extent that kings of other nations were coming to do obeisance to Solomon. Wealth came to Solomon from everywhere. The Bible said in the days of Solomon, people picked gold on the floor like they pick stone. Why? Because God blessed Solomon. He didn't ask for, so, so, for Jaguar. He didn't ask for all those things for himself. No. He was selfless in that request that he made. So, as a young lady, instead of praying for your own blessings like Outside, money, uh, Italian, huh? Brazilian week, Italian here, Cameroon here. You don't pray for all. <laughs> you don't pray for all of those. Give the whole of your prayer time to ask for the salvation of your parents, your siblings. Your people, people who don't know the Lord around you. As a member of an evangelical church like our own, that is spending so much money on crusades across the world, instead of spending all your money on things you lost for, like expensive phones, expensive phones, kinds of things like that, you can give consistently to the work of crusades. And he will bless you for it. Shift attention from your interest, your personal interest. There was somebody who did something that surprised me, that he surprised me forever. You know, there are some things that will surprise you for today. But tomorrow is no longer surprising. It's not a new story again. But something, somebody did something to me some years back, and it's a surprise forever. He had one car. He was a pathfinder. I knew when he bought the car. He brought it to me for prayer and I prayed over the car. I knew, he told me the reason why he needed the vehicle. I knew the kind of work he does. He goes to the creek, you know the creek, uh, the riverine places to do business. So he needed a, a, a four-wheeler to do that. And he bought this pathfinder that was making his job easy. Alright? One day I was just driving home from, from the crusade. In a borrowed car. My, mama, my mama's car. I was just coming home. And I got this phone call. Hello sir, where are you? I said, I'm coming to Ibado. I'm in so so and so place. He said, ah. How long is it likely to take you to get to Ibadan? I said, maybe another two hours. Okay. Because I need to send my mechanic to come and drop something for you. I said, okay. Let him come. I'll be arriving mostly around two o'clock or three. Can't remember precise times now. It's about two hours time. And uh, as I was approaching Muslim, he called again. Are you there now? I said, yes. I'm approaching Muslim now. Aha. The mechanic will be there. When I got there, I saw the pathfinder. And I blew my horn. I greeted him. He followed me. Drove the vehicle here. I didn't even know what it was about. He said, Oh, God said I should bring the car to you. Ah. I thought he was sending you for counseling or something. 
vehicle for what? What did he say? He said, I don't know. He just said, I should bring this here. Ah. So I called him. Hello? We are already in my house. What's going on? Ah, he said, God said he should deliver the vehicle to me. Ah. Deliver to me how? That's the only vehicle you have. He said, yes. Deliver to me for what? He said, God said it's now my ministry assignment. My assignment. So use the car. Ah. I like that kind of assignment, but... The only thing is, I'm wondering, what will you be using for your own assignment? He said, that's another subject. We'll be setting that one. He didn't have another vehicle. He gave the only one he had for the work of God. Well, thank God, I don't know how to reject good things. So I collected it and blessed him. And surely, he shall be blessed. Because he did what God laid on his spirit to do. That's one kindness I can't forget. He, the, it's not that that guy was crazy. Was he crazy? You think he was crazy? Hello? Ah, you don't want to talk again. Was he crazy? No. He was only placing kingdom interest above personal interest. Kingdom interest above personal interest. Selflessness. The kind of money I've spent on taking the gospel to the world in Togo, Cameroon, Niger, Gambia, Nigeria, and other places. If I spend that kind of money on myself, ah, you won't recognize me again. You won't. Oh, ah. I think it was day before yesterday or so. I priced in one place, one guy selling iron rod to check something. I didn't even get out from the vehicle. He came down to me. he came to meet me at the car. And he saw me, he said, Ah Kilo say Kilo uh, selflessness. That's number one. Two, preservation. Your interest is number one. Number two is preservation. We all have what we consider important and we protect those things. The unbeliever will always protect they are errors and keep them as secret from the others. When they do something wrong, they cover it up so that people will not see. So that people will not jeopardize their interests. To protect their self-image. So they, 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 they live a fake life. Cover up everything. People must not know. We, when they make mistakes, people will not know. They cover it up. That's an unbeliever's way of life. For us as believers, our relationship with God is the most important thing. And that is what we must preserve, not our self-image. It will not go. It will not go. And that pushes us to do things that we shouldn't have done. Because we want to preserve our interests, our image. So we also are living fake lives. And our relationship with God is being jeopardized. Because we are covering up what we should not cover up. He that covereth his sin, the Bible says, he shall not prosper. Tell somebody beside you, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. You didn't hear you. Touch him. Touch him. He that covers his sin shall not prosper. That's the way of God though. There was a king in the Bible called Saul. I'm sure you remember him. Saul was sent on an errand. 
by God against the Amalekites. And he came back, having done the assignment, but not properly. So Samuel came and met him. He told him, why did you do it wrong? It's not what God said you should do. And after some time, he understood, he recognized that he didn't do the right. You know what he told Samuel? Said, Let's forget about that one now. At least honor me for the sake of these people here. Hmm? Forget about my sin. Cover me up. Bomila Siri, cover it up for me. That people will not know what I have done. And they will continue to promote me. And God was very angry with that thing. God did not only destroy him, he destroyed his generation. Hello? Are you with me? God did not only kill Saul. God destroyed his entire lineage. There was a time David was looking for somebody to bless in the family of Saul. He had to be asking questions around. Is there somebody still from the family of Saul? Before they eventually found one man, one is a man, half man, living in Lodeba. Lodeba is the forgotten place. That's the meaning of Lodeba. That's where he was living, in a forgotten place. He was a forgotten man living in a forgotten place. And he was an half man. Somebody has to carry him. To come and see David. And then he came. David said, Are you? Are you? My people said, Are, are you the person they say is son of, of Jonathan? He said, your, your, your slave is the one. And David said, Okay. From today, you will eat on my table. Even though you are crippled, you will eat on my table. And David promoted him. Do you know that even that promotion, he lost it again? David said, all the wealth of your father restored back to you. But do you know that he even lost that one again? Because God was completely against every blood of Saul. May God not become your enemy. That was a king in Israel. He was so interested in preserving his glory. Covering up his sin. So that people will not know. David did the exact opposite of that. The prophet came and said, You are the sinner. How can you kill Uriah and take you killed Uriah with the sword of the Ammonite. Even though you are not the one who stabbed him, but you are the one who positioned him for stabbing. You are determined it before it happened. So you are the killer of Uriah. And not only did you kill him, you took his wife. When David was told this thing, what did he do? Right in the midst of the crowd of people in his court. He tore his clothes. He went on his knees before God. And he started seeking mercy in the sight of God. Read the story of David. You will discover that even though he committed sin, his sin was grievous. But the mercy of God was heavy on the life of David. And it flowed on to his generation after him. Because he was a man who did not preserve his self-glory. He humbled himself before God. Look at the ministry of Jesus. You will notice that there was a group of people that were his enemy. They were the enemy of Jesus. What your man for and on in any time. Who are those people? 
Eh? Pharisees, thank you. The Pharisees. He was always giving it to them. They will ask a question. He will hit them hard. There are some times when I'm reading it and, and I hear the way Jesus responded to them, I will, uh, I will be like, Ah, ah, Oluwa, kino shetome. He should have... He never, he never gave them any chance around him. And he's not the only one who... Look, go and read about John also. When they came to John for baptism, he said, You brood of vipers who, who have warned you to flee from the judgment coming. Brood of vipers. I, I mean, can you hear that? Say that to some people. Brood of vipers. That's what it is. <laughs> Why was Jesus so strongly against Pharisees? Because they live a fake life. They pretend to be who they are not. Huh? They cover up all the things about themselves. They are errors. Now, unfortunately, we believers are like them. We believers of today, we are like them. We pretend to be who we are not. Meanwhile, we are not supposed to toe their line. If you make mistake, expose your error. Don't mind your image. Seek forgiveness. Ask for mercy when you have done something wrong. The moment God shows you you have done something wrong, go and apologize. Get over it. So that he can move forward. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But he that confesseth it and forsaketh it shall find mercy. The other day I went to, it was long ago anyhow. I went to see a family. They just did a burial of somebody important to them. And I used to be their pastor before. So they informed me and I thought I was going. But I didn't go. We didn't go. And I, I felt I needed to go see them, apologize and let them know. So I drove to their house. The man was not in town, but the wife was there. And they gave me, they hosted me, I greeted. And I said, I'm sorry, oh, I couldn't come for the barrier. And I felt I should tell her why I didn't come. Yeah, that day I was indisposed. My spirit. I'm sorry. So that's why I've come. And I give her the envelope I would have given. She thanked me. And I left. As I was driving back here. I think it was around the other side. I can't remember where I got to. The Holy Spirit said... You told her you were in this post. I said yes. He said, but on that day you were disposed. <laughs> he said, on that day. And I you know, it's been a time. I couldn't remember what actually happened. But you see, I said what was not true. He said, truly you were indisposed, but it was three days after that that you became indisposed. That day, the reason why you didn't go was because you didn't have transport fear. My wife and I put together, we, didn't, we tried to gather money, we couldn't afford I said, okay, the little we have, reserve it until they come, we will go and give them. And instantly, I remembered all the details of what happened. Ah, I said, Holy Spirit, I had forgotten. He said, next time, learn to keep your mouth shut. You just have told her that we are sorry you couldn't come. Oh. And give the envelope and leave. Not say things that you are not sure about. I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. Next, ti- next time I will be more careful. Thank you. And I kept on driving. He said, so like we were saying. It was falsehood, you know. Ah, I said, I'm sorry, Holy Spirit. I didn't mean to tell lies. 
He said, I had forgiven you. God has forgiven you. But that person, you need to talk to her again. You need to apologize to her for what you said. For the falsehood that you gave. Uh-huh. Now it became more difficult. Why would I call somebody? I say, when I came to your house, I told you a lie. Holy Spirit, let's forget about this matter. He said, no, we cannot forget. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. I, I said, the woman will not respect me again. He said, what do you need that respect for? When you get to hell, will you need that respect? I, I said, hell you can. Lord, you are you know. Oh, you are. He should never greet me again in life. I don't have anything to lose. Hello? As a liar, if I go to hell, I will lose everything. As a matter of fact, forget about going to hell. While I'm here or not, there's an enemy I don't want to have in my life. And that is God. He said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The reason why I can stand any, any day is because I have somebody behind me. I pick my phone. Hello, madam. I said, yes, yes, sir. You know when I said uh, I, uh, it was because uh, I was in this post, that was not true. I just remember clearly now that I got it wrong. It was a lie. I am sorry. He said, sir. Because he didn't understand. Why would I be telling her? What for? He didn't know that I have a better, a senior partner beside me. That I'm friend all the time. He said, sorry. Oh. I, I, I got it wrong. I got it wrong. I was well. It was money we did not have that made us not to come. A few months after that, my daughter was getting married here. As she came and she went, she was dancing and was throwing money and doing. I said, hey, I thought this woman would not relate with me again because I told lies. Can I tell her not to lie? I said, I'm not going Self-preservation. You are preserving what cannot be preserved. If you have done something wrong, Openly apologize and get out of it and move on. Many of our marriages, that is the worst problem there. Yeah. The man and his wife must be open to each other. He said they were naked and they were not ashamed. They were naked and they were not ashamed. Preservation. And you cover everything up. Somebody they have been married for about 30 years, and then all of a sudden, the man just realized that the children, all the three children, are not his own. Haba, Haba, woman, you can cover all of that rubbish for 30 years. Ha! And then when you now go and find out their story, they are members of church, they are believers. They go, hallelujah, they will do money devotion. Ha! One pastor died. He was a pastor of a church, Pentecostal church. He died, and they were doing the funeral. The wife sat in front, like they would normally sit. You know, the, the woman has to sit in front, has black, black one, and her children, and they were doing burial for their father. All of a sudden, another woman arrived with her own set of children also. Also in black, black. They said they have come to bury their husband also. Ha! And their father. 
This other one never met this one before. The man was pastor of Pentecostal church. Church. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Preservation still still preserved. Selflessness. That's what I'm talking about. When you are so selfish, you are focused on yourself. You are preserving. You cover up this, cover up that, cover up everything. The third aspect of that is benefits. Speaking benefits for yourself. You are thinking of your own benefit. My benefit. My benefit. The normal human being wants profit. Wants benefit every time. And the worst part of it is you are seeking that benefit at the detriment of the other people. That's what is meant when you talk of selfishness. Now this manifests in many ways. Many, many ways. Do you notice that the subject of divorce is now a very common subject in marriages among believers? Because our focus has shifted from serving the Lord, from fulfilling His purpose, but to ourselves. What is the need for me? What am I gaining? What is my benefit? Our foundation shifted from the Lord to ourselves. Meanwhile, the foundation of marriage that God established is established upon giving, not receiving. If you are going to a relationship, a marital relationship because of what you are going to receive, that marriage will fail. As a lady, you are thinking of a man that has money. Eh? That you can marry and you will settle down and enjoy your life. That means your benefit is your interest in that marriage. As a man, you are looking at a woman that can give you the kind of children you want, the kind of deals, the kind of... It is your benefit you are seeking. That marriage will fail. We must jump out from the dimension of benefit to the level, level of service. Oh, this woman, I want to marry her. I want to be her friend for the rest of her life. I want to help her to fulfill her destiny. I want the will of God to be done over her life. Now, if I marry her based on that understanding, if we get married and she never got pregnant, that won't change our relationship. But if I marry her because she must give me so so and so number of children, then it's an investment huh? that must yield harvest, dividend. Marriage is a journey into a relationship. If children come, fantastic, addition, lomoje. If they don't come, fantastic. It's a relationship. Oh, he is rich. That's just an addition. That's not the essence of that relationship. So if you get into a relationship with a man and his financial power broke, you know, because... I know a lot of you won't get into a relationship with a man who doesn't have money. Huh? Am I right? Most of you, you know, I face youth now. They are always to this side of the hall. I know you won't marry a man who does not have. You can't believe that God is speaking to you about some man who doesn't have a job. I know, I know. The moment. He gets a car. Hey, here you are. You are checking off. What work does he do? He has a job. Hey, we are all company. Ah, bro, bro. <laughs> He's qualified for marriage. Have you? Okay. Now, assuming you marry him, 
and then all of a sudden he lost the job. And maybe a fraud was done in his company and the ASCC is after him after all. What are you going to do? Your marriage will become sour instantly. Because they have lied against him and they have arrested him. Or because he has lost his job. Because you are building your relationship on a wrong premise. It shouldn't be based on benefits. It should be based on service and relationship. You want to do for her, she wants to do for you. If both of you have that mindset, your hope will be strong forever. But as long as what you are looking for is benefit, benefit, Put your mind on the right subject. The Lord will help you. So love your husband unconditionally. Love your wife unconditionally. Whatever you are doing in life, focus, shift your focus from benefit. You know that even in business, people who do business because of benefit, they don't last in business. They don't do well in business. You know the people who do well in business? People who offer services. He comes to a community like this one, and then he looks, ah, these people are suffering. Oh. There is nobody doing this in this community. Oh, maybe there is no school. So kids are struggling to get to school. They will travel to Muslim, travel to somewhere, travel to somewhere before they get to school. So he says, okay, I think we should get a school started here. So that all these kids can find a better place to attend. And it starts a good school. You know, it's coming from the premise of uh, services. He's not thinking of making money for himself. People like that, they are the ones who excel in business. So what I'm saying is, shift attention from benefits. Think about services. Let me show you something I read in the Bible that interests me. How many of us know Moses? No, I should have said, how many of us don't know Moses? We all know Moses in the Bible. Moses met God in the wilderness at the burning bush. And God spoke to him and said, go deliver Israel. And when Moses was rambling, rambling, he said, okay, I give you Aaron as your assistant. Even though it's your elder brother, he will be your prophet. Whatever word you put in his mouth, that's what he will say. That, that was the beginning of the assignment of Moses. Are you still with me? Now, as they went along the way, there was a point that God said, okay, I'm choosing somebody to become the priest. For Israel. And he will become the priest. His children will become priests after him. And Aaron was that somebody. And I asked myself, what about the sons of Moses? Moses also had two sons. Huh? What happened to those ones? After Moses, there was nobody in the generation of Moses. Who retained glory? But Aaron, his generation retained the glory. Hello. Up to now, the sons of Aaron, they are still the high priest in Israel. But the sons of Moses have been forgotten long ago. Have you ever bothered you to think about that? Moses set up the platform. And gave it to Aaron. And he stepped aside. 
Our generation will find it difficult to do that. We are thinking of ourselves, our benefit. When they distributed the properties, the land, they gave a whole city to Joshua. They gave uh, several cities to sons of Aaron. The sons of Moses were distributed alongside with every other person. There was nothing special for them. Hello? So what I'm telling you is this. Greatness in the things of God is not in what you amass for yourself. It's not in all these uh, benefits that you are thinking about for yourself. So in case you become a leader, it is not a platform to amass wealth, but a platform to bless people. That's very important. Because strangely, the devil has deceived the church in Nigeria today. And we have many young people who are eager to receive a call. In fact, many are already doing God's work with, with or without a call. But the truth is that most of them are deceived by the devil to assume that ministry is a way to amass wealth. They saw wealth being displayed by some ministers and they are in ministry to manifest the same. If you are in ministry for benefit, you are in trouble. Because ministry is not about you and your benefit. Let me define ministry for you. Ministry is death. Death. You must die to yourself. Die to your benefit. You must die for that ministry to move forward. For that assignment to be done. But it's not even limited to ministry. It includes anything you are doing. Your business. If your business is going to do well, you can't be the type who eats with all your mouth. Little money you make, you must drink horrible. You must drink uh, Maltina. Huh? You know all those things you drink. Little profit like this, you, you, I want to. I want to eat suya. I want to. Eat, you, your business is not right. Benefit. You are thinking of benefit. Benefit. Little profit you made. You have bought one clothes. Another profit you made. You have bought a shoe. Some of us, you need to enter some people's room. Shoes. You won't know who owns the room, whether human being or shoe. That's your investment. Your business cannot do well. You need to invest into it. You don't understand what I'm talking about. You need to keep on pouring, pouring, pouring. Look at our ministry today. You see us, we have property, we have that one. We have. Where do you think it's coming from? My blood. Every little thing God gives to me goes into it. Goes into it. Somebody sends a gift to, to my wife. Through me, he said, This is your wife that is always supporting you. Please give her this money. Ah, thank you. So I told my wife, This person sent money. Oh. And she called the person to say thank you. The money never got to her hand. Oh. Because there's an allowance that goes to her every month. It doesn't go beyond that. Whatever comes extra is ministry. That's how to do it. If you are thinking, if, if all you are doing is your clothes, your dress, your, you won't go far. When I was building this place, when we were building this place, most of the people in church at that time, they were wondering why, why do we need the place? So they never gave That's the way it goes. 
leadership. You are the one who will see what is to be done. And you do it. You keep on doing it. And then after some time, other people will see and they will come along with you. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. A brother told me, once told me how he got a contract towards the tail end of a bachelor's uh, regime in Nigeria. The contract, according to what he told me, was about 10 billion naira at that time. And he was very excited. He said they invited him for a meeting with the board of the Parastata in Abuja. And he went to attend the meeting. He said when he got to the meeting, the board told him that, look here, we don't expect you to do this project. We are just using you to bring out the money. It's our money. We need our money. So we are bringing it out. Huh? They said, for your services, we are giving you two billion. You will sign that you have collected the whole of the money, but it's only two billion you will collect. Don't even appear in the site. We don't need you to do anything. Your sign, collect it, and uh, go your way. They said the money, the, your own two billion, is here already. It's not that we are going to transfer. It's here in cash. A bullion van will follow you as you are going home now. Just sign, and the two billion follow you. You do whatever you like with your two billion. And it's not what you should sign. You will sign ten billion. That he collected ten billion, and they will keep his billion, and he will take two billion. And it will sign that he has completed the project. But he was a believer. He didn't know what to say. Because he knows that these people who can do this, they can kill him. So he excused himself. He said he's pressed. He needs to go to the toilet. As soon as he stepped out, he picked grace. He never went back there. That was Abacha Rachel. Towards the tail end of Abacha Rachel. Now, they will have put that load on his own integrity. The following government, you know, Abacha suddenly died eventually. The following government will have been going after this man. You collected money, you did not do the project. That's why, that's what's happening in Nigeria. But you know, why am I saying this? Some of you will soon have access to some of these things. You may go into politics, you may be in civil service, you may be in business. I need you to know that wherever you are, you are representing God. Your mission is not to seek self-benefit, but to serve His interest and distribute the benefit to the ordinary people. You don't need to go and steal from government to give. You say, ah, this, this two billion, if they give me now, I pay tight. The crusade they want to do will be easy. We don't need their money for crusade. Stolen money? No, we don't need it. Selflessness. Stop focusing upon yourself. Focus upon the plan of God. In conclusion, Self-denial and self-crucifixion are two words that can describe selflessness. And this selflessness is very important when you are working with God. Even in business, you can't succeed without selflessness. And to stay in glory, you need to be selfless. Like Joseph Joseph became prime minister in Egypt. He handled the entire wealth of Egypt. Even the entire wealth of the world. But he did not preserve it for himself. Because he was a great man. 
Greatness is not how much you amass for yourself. Greatness is the integrity of your life. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Baba. One more time. Have your way. Have your way. Oh Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Oh Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. You are going to pray. Give me grace to place God first in my life. I want to make God the number one, number one person in my life. All the time. Give me the grace. Can you pray that prayer? I want God to be number one in my life every time. Give me grace. Give me grace that God will be number one in my life. I know it is you who work in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Give me grace so that you'll be number one in my life all the time. You must have your way in my life. It's not about me. It can't be about me. It's about you all the time. I want you to be number one all the time in my life. Give me the grace to make God number one in my life all the time. In Jesus' name we pray. The second aspect of that prayer. Teach me to crucify the flesh in my life. To crucify my flesh. To put my flesh under. He must not rule me. My flesh. Ah, let me, let me, let me explain it. There was a time in my life. I say I'm fasting. And I'm going on the way like this. And I see a woman crying, somebody crying something. Man, dear, just about dear, wrong. She must be cool, where by. I wear yes, you cool. I won't be able to go for that. I must eat out of that thing they are fine. Ready, no red, dead, dead, to ye. No red, dead, dead, oh, mother. My word. The moment I see meat pie, anything that is looking in back, my fast is full. After some time, I realize I cannot go far in life if I don't control my flesh. If I'm passing by television and they are showing something, a drama, also, I can't pray again. I can't go for my devotion because I saw something on television. Ah, it's an action film from America. Ah, I cannot do any of that again. The flesh was maybe your own is football. 
or soccer or whatever you call it. So you are going to pray. Teach me to crucify the flesh in my life. Can you pray that prayer? That fitness must be over in my life. Help me to crucify the self, the flesh. This flesh that is pushing me, that is making me to do what I shouldn't do. Help me to crucify it. Maybe your own is falsehood, deception. Teach me to crucify the flesh. Mukodo baloye mi, mukodo bale no mo. Ara yi ukodo, ara kiku yi ukodo ba semije. Teach me to crucify the flesh in my life. Baba o o lo have your way. Have your way, have your way, oh Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way, oh Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way, oh Lord. 